Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. This week it is finally time to install our four 400 watt solar panels on the Solarge and hopefully a little bit later this week we'll be able to restep the mast. With the four solar panels I've got sitting up at the marina office right now, we'll have a combined total of 1600 watts worth of solar. That is quite a lot for a 38 foot boat and it hopefully means we won't be putting too many hours on our diesel genset even when living the sweet sweet life of luxury cooking with electricity. My name is Mess, this is my wife Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021 we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. Today is the first non-windy day we've had for weeks. So let's head outside and start installing those solar panels. With the first two panels lifted up on the arch and secured temporarily with some clamps, I added Sigaflex between the two solar panels and bolted them together. The Sigaflex will work both as an adhesive and a sealant, so we won't get any water dripping down between the two panels. Then I was on to drilling holes for the support arms with the stainless adapters I made two weeks ago. Our friend Mark swung by and lent a hand with a big portion of the installation. Getting the panels in place, lined up and bolted in place took hours. Wherever stainless and aluminum is touching, I cut out little plastic washers out of an old flexible cutting board to help prevent the corrosion that occurs when you combine the similar metals. The sliding arms for the bottom solar panels required new holes because the new solar panels are about 5 cm wider than the old ones. Abe and I, with a lot of huffing and puffing, managed to get the two sliding solar panels on there before it got dark. A day well spent. It is the next day. The panels are in place. This is so exciting. Now with the help of Mark, we were also able to get the cables run inside of the arch yesterday. The plan is to run the bottom two panels in parallel and the top two panels in parallel, but more about that later. Athena's arch has this unique sliding feature where the two bottom solar panels slide in underneath the two top solar panels. This sliding feature allows us to stow away the bottom two solar panels when we're sailing so they they don't get damaged and then when we're at anchor somewhere and it's nice and calm then we can unfold our entire array. For this sliding feature to work I just need to add a couple of spaces underneath the port side bottom solar panel here so there's room enough for the arms for the starboard side solar panel to slide in underneath. I found these spacers on Amazon and the smallest one the five millimeter ones here they should be absolutely perfect for this. After having done the first one I figured out I can do this one at a time so even though the wind has picked up today there is zero chance of the solar panels flying away. I've got five millimeter spacers and I've got 10 millimeter spacers. Turns out what I need is a seven millimeter spacer. It's a boat. Nothing is ever supposed to go as planned. After a little bit of high precision machining and some fiddling about, here are the solar panels in their collapsed state. As you can see, they take up a lot less room now. To slide out the panels is simply as just pushing them, but I think I may need a little bit of lube on the tracks because they don't slide as easy as they used to. Here are the panels fully deployed. It is quite the sunshade. When the panels are stoved or deployed or in any position in between, we can lock them in place with these little guys. Here are the spacers I put in. They're simply just there to allow the legs from the other side to slide under this panel when the panels are being pushed together. Due to a little bit of a design error with the feet of the arch, there is an issue with sideways movement. I'm afraid if we go to see with this, it's just gonna end up fatiguing the wells and the whole thing is just gonna fall off. So we need to fix that. The cheapest and probably also the simplest way of fixing this is putting in a cross brace with some Dyneema and some turnbuckles. That should make this nice and stiff. Sitting in the cockpit enjoying the sun, I put two Brummel splices into 10 millimeter Dyneema. It is super easy and super quick, even easier than doing an eye splice in three strand and it's also easy to undo the splice in case you need to make a small change. With both of the lines spliced, I threw both of them on our midship's cleat and used the winch to give them a quick stretch. Ta-da! One cross-braced solar arch. There is absolutely no sideways flex in this thing now. Keep in mind that the cross brace is only intended to be used when we're on passage. If we're at anchor in a marina or out for a nice calm day sail, 
I don't think we need it, but for on passage, I feel a lot better about the solar arch with this in place. The 10 millimeter Dyneema I've used is way overkill for this. I think the tiny turnbuckles here are gonna give out way before the line does. I think this line has a breaking strength of something like 10 tons. The reason I went with the 10 millimeter line is simply just because it's gonna be nicer to grab onto when you're in the cockpit instead of just a super thin line. In case you're wondering, it is still super easy to get on and off the boat with the cross brace in place. I think this worked out fairly well considering it is the easiest and cheapest way to remove that sideways flexing. I've got this big box of stuff with some conduit and all kinds of stuff I need to wire up the solar panels, including these paralleling connectors. So uh, let's get started. It took an entire day, but I am done with the outside wiring of the solar panels, or that is to say as close as we can get without having uh, these paralleling connectors, because there's something wrong with these. This side of the connector works perfectly. It fits in both of them, that's nice. But the other type, well, it fits on that one, but not on that one. They look identical, so it must be some kind of manufacturing error. It must just be a little bit off so I can't get in there. I've ordered a different brand of these guys and uh, they should show up tomorrow, but tomorrow there's something else at the top of the to-do list, and that is to re-step the mast. Early next morning I turned on the engine as Ava was getting ready to undo our forward mooring line. With the engine going, I undid the starboard aft mooring line, but kept the port aft line attached. There was a little bit of wind pushing us against the finger and by keeping the mooring line attached and using the engine, I pulled us away from the finger, just enough not to roll on the fenders. Safely tied up at the rigorous pontoon, we had about 45 minutes until they were ready for us. We used that time to complete a little mini project. Using a 2 meter length of stainless steel tube and a few fittings, we made a bar for securing our jerry cans up on deck. More about that in an upcoming video. And just like that, the guys were ready to re-step the mast. It's basically the reverse process of last week where we unstepped the mast and everything went off without a hitch. The guys from Marine Rigging Services did a great job, but I must admit it feels almost weird to have other people working on Athena and not being a part of the process myself. After a few hours, we untied the lines and headed back to Gosport, where we this time executed a basically perfect reversing into our slip maneuver. Before calling it a day, we got the boom back on the mast, we ran the cables from the mast back inside of the boat, and I installed a little chafe protection in preparation of leading more lines aft to the cockpit. It's the next day, and as expected, the new paralleling connectors arrived yesterday. Unfortunately, I only ordered one set, and of course I need two sets, but a second set should show up a little bit later today. I've mentioned multiple times now that the panels are wired in parallel. Short of giving each panel their own MPPT charge controller, you're gonna have to wire them either in parallel or series. There's nothing wrong with having each panel be on its own charge controller, except for the added cost of more charge controllers and then a bunch more wiring that's needed to come into the boat, because the charge controllers are gonna have to be mounted inside of the boat and that was actually the limiting factor for me. I simply wasn't able to fit that much cable through the solar arch. In terms of choosing between series and parallel there are some pros and cons to each and those depend on what type of solar panel you've got, where you're going to be installing it and also your battery voltage. 
Real short. If you connect the panels in parallel, you keep the voltage the same and you up the amps, whereas in series, you keep the amperage the same but raise the voltage. When connecting the panels in series, you raise the voltage. That means you can go with a smaller gauge cable, which is nice, but there is one giant downside to connecting them in series, and that is if one panel is shaded, then you get zero output from that entire array. On the other hand, if you connect the panels in parallel and you shade one panel, that in no way affects any of the other panels so that's nice but you are upping the amps so you may have to consider that for your wiring. Ideally when connecting panels in either series or parallel you don't want to mix and match. If you absolutely need to mix and match you should make sure that the panels have similar specs otherwise you could run into some issues. Our panels are rated at I think it's 65 volts something like that and a nominal power of 400 watts. You can also get panels that are rated at 12 or 24 volts but for big high output panels, higher voltage seems like it's a good feature because if you take those 65 volts and 400 watts, that is something like 6 amps. But if you step the volts down to 12 and the same 400 watts, then you're looking at 33 amps. That's a big difference. In this little theoretical example, the amount of energy you're getting from the two panels is the exact same 400 watts. But one is at a much higher amperage, which means you're going to have to get a thicker gauge cable and you have a bigger potential for a voltage drop over your run. So higher voltage is better for high output panels. To further illustrate this example, if I take our four 400 watt panels and connect them all in parallel and use six square millimeter cable, I'm looking at a voltage drop of something like 2%. Now, if I took a single 12 volt 400 watt panel from this theoretical example and did the same six meter run using the same six millimeter a square cable, I'd be looking at a voltage drop around 15%. Besides any potential safety concerns, there's also just 15% that you've just lost that's just lost. There's one additional upside to going with a higher voltage panel and that's the fact that these charge controllers can step down the voltage up the amps but they cannot go the other way. That is to say you cannot take a 12 volt panel and charge a 24 volt battery bank. For that you need to connect two at least two 12 volt panels in series to then bump up the voltage which then you're susceptible to the whole shading thing and whatnot. So yeah higher voltage panels yeah, seemed like a good idea. When it comes time to install a charge controller, I think nowadays nobody's using the old PVM style charge controllers anymore. I think everybody has switched to MPPT, which is a good thing because they're more efficient and just do a way better job. If you'd like to go with a Victron Energy MPPT charge controller, they have this super neat little MPPT sizing calculator where you put in the specs for your solar panel, how many you want in series, how many you want in parallel, and then they spit out a recommendation for the charge controller. If we just bump the parallel counter here up by one so it's two then you can see they're recommending a smart solar mppt 100 slash 30 which wouldn't you know it is exactly the model we've got here very fortunate the calculator has another cool feature now if we bump up the parallel connector here to four so we'll have all four panels installed and we scroll down then we can put in a city here and it'll tell us roughly roughly how much to expect. For our four panels in the Canary Islands, we're looking at almost eight kilowatt hours per day. I don't know how accurate this is, but it's a fun little feature to play with. In terms of wiring this, we have six square millimeter cable from the solar panels to the MPPT charge controller. From the charge controller to the battery, I've got 16 square millimeter cable, simply just because that's the biggest gauge that will fit in the charge controller, and that'll just give me less loss. As close as possible to the battery, I'll have a 40 amp circuit breaker to protect all of this wiring. The manual points out something interesting here and that is that the DC PV input is not isolated from the battery circuit. In my case here, even if somehow we incur the full wrath of the lithium battery up in the six square millimeter cable, we're still gonna be protected by this 40 amp circuit breaker, which is perfectly fine for a six square millimeter cable. There is something missing from this that is very common to add, and that is a switch in between the solar panels and the charge controller to have a way of disconnecting the panels. For now, we'll just use a blanket to cover them up in case we need to, but also you should keep in mind that if you add a switch to disconnect the panels, you shouldn't do that while they're outputting that could potentially harm them but yeah we'll add a switch at a later date. The biggest challenge in this wiring job is the fact that it's going to take place in the aft cabin also known as the garage so let me go ahead and clear out all of this junk so we can actually get in there.
Everything is all wired up. I haven't reset the circuit breakers yet, but I have uh, unfurled the solar panels and now I'm just doing the obligatory software update for the charge controllers. I've reset the breakers and we're making juice. Not a lot of juice under 200 watts, but it is overcast and raining. It is late in the day, but the sun just peaked out and we're making 500 watts. Right now we're charging our lithium batteries with solar panel. Big giant success. We have the lights on, we have the freezer going, we have the fridge going, we have the Mac Mini on, the display, our NAS box is running too. This is pretty dang awesome. For a brief moment in time here, we were actually generating more power than we were consuming. I hope that's not the last time we see that. I am thrilled about the solar panels, but uh, why don't we see if we can squeeze a little bit more good news out of this day. Let me go ahead and connect the uh, cables from the mast so we can see if the new VHF antenna and coax cable works better than the old one. After much pushing and pulling, all the cables are reattached. There's still a giant mess in here, but uh, I'll tidy that up later. Let's go ahead and look at the VSR. Drum roll, please. It is 1.6 to 1. Awesome. If memory serves, 1.5 or less is considered excellent and up to 2 to 1 is considered decent. So 1.6 is pretty good. Working solar panels and a decent VSR. What more can a guy wish for? Well, maybe for his wife to be here, but uh, Ava's visiting her sister in Hungary and she won't be back until late next week. So yeah, for the end of this video and for next week's video, you guys will have to contend with just old-fashioned me. And speaking of next week's video, I think I'm going to take our new outboard, electric outboard for a spin, and also the canvas guys are finally ready to mount the spray hood and the backdrop. And now that we finally have the mast restepped with new running rigging, we can go ahead and bend on the new sails from position sail. Also have a bunch of other smaller projects like for instance door handles next week. I know that's something a lot of people have been requesting. So uh, yeah, next week should be a lot of fun. And on that hopeful note, I'll end this week's video here all by my lonesome. So yeah, I hope to see all of you guys back here at Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you!